special hour-long edition of America Tonight. The deadline is here. Are we a half hour from war? Will Iraq move first? We'll go live to Israel, Saudi Arabia, Baghdad, the Pentagon, the White House, and Amman, Jordan. A new report pinpoints likely Iraqi terrorist targets in the United States. Warnings are already spreading across the nation. And new waves of dissent as the war deadline arrives. From CBS News, this is America Tonight. With Dan Rather and Charles Carroll in New York and Leslie Stahl in Washington. Good evening. The minutes are ticking away. Midnight is the time appointed by the world for Iraq to leave Kuwait. And as far as we can tell, not one of the 545,000 Iraqi soldiers in that little country has budged. So now they face 680,000 U.S. and allied troops authorized by the U.N. to attack any time after the next few minutes have passed. We will be here with you to see the deadline come and go. The diplomats are talked out, exhausted and despairing after doing their best. Western ambassadors have left Baghdad for their safety. And tonight, Iraq's ambassador to the United States, Mohammed al mashat left Washington. We do not want war. We have said it time again. We will not be the first one to attack at all. We are only the defending ourselves. But if we are attacked, then God knows where the, flame, where the flame will reach. God knows where the flame will reach. Whether or not Iraq's insistence that it won't strike first can be believed, the sand is running out of the hourglass now to the midnight deadline. High alert in the sand on both sides of the line across Saudi Arabia and its desert. Important to note that President Bush has not said he's decided to strike. If and when the president does give the order to use force, it would go through the chain of command at the U.S. Defense Department, where David Martin is watching and waiting and has the latest for us now. David? Dan, there are no signs of any unusual activity here as this deadline approaches, but that's not surprising because midnight here is 8 a.m. in the Persian Gulf, and I think it's very unlikely that the U.S. would decide to strike during daylight hours because the pilots of those first aircraft over Iraq will be counting very heavily on the cover of darkness. Now, it's always possible for Saddam Hussein to decide to, to strike first as soon as this deadline expires. But as, I think as far as the United States is concerned, it will be a, another 10 hours till darkness comes again and conditions are right. Thanks, David. Uh, Bob Simon is standing by in uh, Saudi Arabia now with the U.S. forces there. Uh, any doubt in your mind, uh, Bob, that uh, there's yeah. about to be a war? I have program. Hello, Bob Simon. Dan, the midnight deadline is 8 in the morning here, and that's just minutes away. And I never knew that it could be so chilling in the desert. The mood here is, is very ominous and very expectant, Saudi and... Kuwaiti officials report all sorts of, of rumors that the war will start in 12 hours and 36 hours. I don't set much store in any of them, but the overwhelming feeling here is that it will start soon, that the political advantages for President Bush in starting it soon by far outweigh the military disadvantages in starting it that soon. The armed forces, the forces on the ground may not be at their full peak yet, but the Air Force is ready to strike. and and there's very little doubt that they will do so. The, there were reports also that the, the Air Force was especially, especially busy overnight, that they were flying out of all their bases up and down the, the Saudi coast just to keep the Iraqis on edge. The sense here is that the Iraqi war aims will be to hit the th three things that they know America cares about. They will want to cause massive American casualties. They will want to hit the Saudi refineries they'll want to hit Israel. And the awful thing from the American point of view is that they may be able to do these things and in fact win the war from their point of view without ever having won a single battle. From the American side, what the Americans have to do in this as the, the deadline approaches, the aims become even more daunting, the Americans have to achieve such a delicate balance that it's very difficult to see how they can accomplish it all. The Americans not only have to defeat the Iraqi army and, and liberate Kuwait, so to speak, but they have to do it very quickly. 
they have to do it without causing, without inflicting massive civilian casualties. That would lead to a to an, an awful situation in the Arab world if the Americans did that. They have to do it, of course, without without suffering heavy American casualties, as without awful political consequences in the United States. And they have to do it. They have to diminish Iraq without destroying Iraq, without demolishing Iraq. No one in this region wants to see Iraq come out of this without any power at all. Charles? Dan, as we know, uh, folks in Tel Aviv have been issued uh, gas masks. Let's uh, go there now and ask Tom Fenton whether he sees any sign of them on this fateful night. Tom? Well, Charles, the Israelis are expecting the... Uh or prepared for the worst, I should say, and, and hoping it won't happen, but they fear that the Iraqis may not wait to be attacked by the coalition in the Gulf and may launch a strike against Israel preemptively in an attempt to turn this into an Arab-Israeli war. So they're prepared. Tom, uh, uh, could you see any sign of, uh, of uh, fear? Uh, the Israelis are not notoriously fearful people. Uh, were, were people getting out of town last night? No, on the contrary, this country has been surprisingly calm. None of that somber mood I hear described in other capitals. Uh, everyone, or almost everyone, has been issued a little box. I've got one here at my feet that contains a gas mask and a syringe with atropine in it. It's uh, an antidote to uh, nerve gas. Uh, everybody has been instructed in how to uh, take cover and what to do in case of a chemical warfare attack. And the Israelis have just announced that the schools will all be closed until Sunday. But no, uh, there's, there's no panic. And in fact, one of the odd things is that hundreds of Soviet immigrants continue to arrive here. More than 400 Soviet Jews flew in yesterday and they were immediately given gas masks and hundreds more are expected to arrive today. Tom Fenton in Tel Aviv. Thanks. Leslie? Charles, Iraq declared today that a furnace of hell awaits anyone trying to dislodge its 545,000 troops from Kuwait. Is Saddam Hussein preparing for a preemptive strike? Joining us, Congressman Les Aspen, Chairman of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, what do you know about the possibility that uh, Saddam Hussein will strike Israel before we launch any kind of attack at all? I think that might be a strategy. I think it might be a very smart strategy from Saddam Hussein's standpoint. Strike Israel and strike Israel only. That means that the retaliation which comes from the United States and we hope at that point would come from our Arab allies, would look like we're going to war to save Israel. And that would put the Arab allies in a very tough spot. Let me ask you if, if you have a sense of how much warning we, we'd get. I understand that our intelligence over the missiles that they would launch to uh, attack Israel is pretty good. Uh, what kind of warning yeah, would we the, get? The, the missiles that the Iraqis have are liquid-fueled missiles. Not solid fuel, liquid fuel, which means that you takes about two, three, four, five, six hours at a time to, to load them and get them ready. So if you see them uh, coming up and loading up the missiles and fueling up the missiles, you should get warning. Now, that doesn't mean that they might not have some fully fueled missiles hiding under a bridge somewhere. It's a very dangerous thing to do, but Saddam Hussein is not particularly concerned about the safety of his soldiers. The surprise attack could come if they had so liquid-fueled missiles already fueled up hiding under a bridge. We don't know up. whether they do or not. We do not know whether they do or not. But if they use the, so the normal missiles on the launching pads, we would have several hours of warning. Okay. Do you have any sense that our military people are working on an assumption that he would launch a preemptive strike in I the next think, day or so? I don't think they have a presumption one way or the okay. other. What, uh, what about uh, our attacking? What about the timetable that you know or think B President Bush is working under here in his own mind? I, I don't know, and nobody knows, um, oh, very few people know, President Bush and a few people around him. Um, my guess is that, uh, uh, that, that uh, what they said at the beginning of the show uh, uh, from Saudi Arabia was correct, that it's unlikely to happen during daylight hours. It might not happen for a couple of days yet. One. One indicator is that the French National Assembly is meeting to endorse the use of force by the French forces, and they're meeting on Thursday. That might postpone it till Friday. But, um, but, tell but me we're talking in the next few days, I believe. Next few days. 
the president keeps saying, or the White House keeps saying, sooner rather than later. Is that because of military pressures, diplomatic pressures, or is that because of political pressures? Every day that goes by, the protests seem to build across the country. Uh, do you get a sense that he's under that kind of pressure? I don't, I don't think it's domestic pressure that's at work here. I think it's more the general pressure that we've set a deadline, the deadline has come, if uh, we want to make sure that Saddam Hussein does not come out a victor in this process, therefore you can't wait much beyond January 15th. Now the last time you were on this broadcast, only a few days ago actually, you, you said that you thought, uh, based on the war plan that you'd seen, that the uh, attack we launched would be mainly uh, by air at the beginning, that you thought we'd have a rapid victory with few casualties. Uh, there are Air Force commanders who are beginning to say they're not so sure of that. Are you still confident? I, I'm, I'm confident. The, the air power, the air war, which will begin at the beginning, work, work from the air power to the ground forces, first few phases, air force only. The, um, the difficulty of getting the Iraqi air force is that they are heavily fortified in revetments if they stay on the ground. If they come up in the air, uh, they are very, very vulnerable. Uh, if they stay on the ground, of course, they don't do them any good. Uh, well, so they might stay on the ground. They might stay on the ground, but then, of course, if they stay on the ground, they don't, uh, they don't, it doesn't do Iraq any good. But, you know, these Air Force commanders in Saudi Arabia say that uh, they have a lot of respect for the missiles they have, the anti-aircraft missiles, the Soviet-made, the French-made missiles, uh, to knock out our planes, and that they're expecting heavier airplane losses on our side than you and other uh, well, I don't know. The they, they, they didn't address the issues of, uh, of, of Air Force casualties directly and how, how many we were predicting or how many the Pentagon was predicting. But they're right to be, uh, to be cautious. They're right to not o underestimate an enemy. I, I'm glad they're saying that. I do believe that they are a lot better than the Iraqi pilots, that our equipment is a lot better than the Iraqi equipment. The allies we've got are better than the Iraqi pilots, and we outnumber them. Okay. Congressman Les Aspen, thank you. Thank you. Dan? Thanks, Leslie. We're going to make an effort now to go live to Baghdad and our veteran CBS News correspondent, Alan Pizzi. Alan, are you there? Yes, Dan, good morning. Uh, I think it's morning. As I look out the window, I can see about 25 feet. That's the same way it was yesterday. The fog will probably burn off in a half an hour. No, not a half an hour. Maybe three, four hours, and it should be a nice spring day. But it's not a day the Iraqis have been looking forward to. By late yesterday afternoon, the streets here were just about deserted, and last night, restaurants and nightclubs were absolutely empty. In the windows of apartment blocks, you can see tape going up across the glass to help it prevent it from shattering. The Iraqis are pretty war-hardened people, but um, the ones we've been speaking to said they'd hoped that that kind of expertise was a thing of the past. Now you get the feeling they're resigned to a fate they know they can neither control nor even influence. And some of them, perhaps it's out of desperation, cling to the, the hope of patriotism. They tell you, they tell themselves that this is the only thing they can do. They're defending their homeland. They're the ones that are, that are the victims, and they must fight. But for the first time in my experience here, and it's not inconsiderable, people are also openly expressing fear and doubts. Young men who served in the war will say to you, our lives are over, they're finished, they've been wasted. No one here ever th seriously thought that Saddam would back down before the deadline, and I have to say, no one thinks he's going to back down either after the deadline, which is, by my watch, in 17 minutes. Alan, let me follow up on that. A few days ago when I was uh, in Baghdad, there, there was a, a sense that perhaps, just perhaps, Saddam Hussein would let the deadline itself pass and then quickly move to some new initiative of his own, operating perhaps through the Algerians, some sort of, quote, uh, Arab effort, unquote. Do you see any signs of that anywhere, any indications of that possibly happening? Dan, there's not the slightest indication. It's certainly something that everyone here will occasionally mention and, and rather hopes for, but Last night we spoke to the Minister of Information and, and he just asked about other initiatives. He just, just laughed and said, we're here and, and, and we will fight and we will win. And, and they have this strange attitude that it, they're now openly admitting that the United States is technologically superior to them. And, and they admit that they're going to be mauled. But they just say, we're going to do it. There's, no one has offered us anything that we, that we want to talk about. There just doesn't seem to be any hope that these people want to discuss anything. That's what they tell us. They, they could be, they could be, um, uh, there could be disinformation for all I know, but I certainly don't have that feeling inside. 
Alan Pizzi, live from Baghdad. Alan, take care of yourself. Coming up next on America Tonight, Iraq's threat to spread terror in America, and later, Americans who dissent and demonstrate against President Bush's policy in the Gulf. So stay here with us.